So we think we're going to come back to Slay the Princess soon, and when I was thinking about what the game reminded me of in terms of metatextual games, this is one of the big ones that came up, and also one that I really enjoyed the last few years, so I, I kind of put it forward. This is Inscription, uh, which I'm the only person who played more than a few hours of, and Josh hasn't played at all, I don't think? Because it looks like a, a big play button right now. This, this, yeah, I don't know if that this counts as game, an inscription. This is a game that exists in kind of a playful space with regards to how it presents and develops its mechanics for in a lot of different ways uh, which is i think kind of interesting to talk about so i'm gonna push this button so these this is the pony island guy right this is the pony island guy this is the apotheosis of pony island so right this up here we're gonna get our first... turning into a god Right up here, we're going to get our first kind of, like, odd thing about this game that I kind of enjoy, and which is kind of, like, has the courage to be baffling, which is that Ooh, there's trails. no new game option. There's only continue. Huh. I mean... Uh, oh, I have to... Okay. Uh, it's it's like already to really sure. the core mechanic of this game, too that everything is I, I guess maybe there aren't any subtitles because there's no voice acting who knows oh Let's no there's only continue. subtitles there's only subtitles there's no voice acting right. without subtitles cool so this game is in the broadest possible sense a deck building roguelike card game Wow. It's just a lot of other stuff as well. This very broad category there, as it turns out. Slay the Spire, um, I think, I, caused some yeah, problems this is... in this industry that I like. <laughs> some problems that you like. Or, or, or no, I, I like, like the industry. The I don't like. like the problems. I don't like the fact that everything's a fucking deck builder now. Some well, of them this... are good, but many of them don't need to be deck builders, so we'll see what this one is. This game has kind of an iterative, interesting approach to its deck building framed around its central gameplay conceits that I, I think is cool. I, I should say that I came into this not really having played any deck builders and really having very little, like, collectible card game experience at all. So, this is... The basic gameplay tutorial, Don't. but one thing I like about it is that it also does start introducing some of the narrative stuff okay. that's happening as well. The tone. Alright, so these are Yu-Gi-Oh! rules. Yep, you play squirrels or to create free sacrifices, and then other cards can also be sacrificed to generate the blood required to summon new cards from your deck. From your hand, rather. What is it? What is it with indie games and killing squirrels lately? <laughs> I don't know which one you're talking about. Squirrels. The State only Warriors game I also, can think uh... of recently that killed <laughs> squirrels is is Baldur's Gate three, which is not an indie game. No, but I get it's yeah, but it's the same thing though, isn't it? It's like the same space. Like it's not focus approved corporate squirrel killing as a directive for the season. How is like he focus able to group say the coyote? Oh, it doesn't. He like has no. Sacrifice. Yes, yes. He he has. It's asymmetrical. He summons based on just like ad hoc placement of his cards. But the catch is that you can Neat. see where they're going to come in uh, one turn ahead. Uh. So uh, what happened there was you had the choice yeah. to draw a card or a squirrel. Uh, the cards have costs, generally the squirrels don't, so the idea is that sometimes you draw a squirrel to ensure that you'll have enough resources to bring in something new. So, for example, since you have the stoat and the squirrel here, you can play the wolf, which requires two blood, by sacrificing both of them to play the wolf, which will do more damage than the stoat alone. Can I see the entire card of the River Snapper? Uh, Six yes, you can continue one. going down. So, um, so remember how you can go backwards? Just like, yeah, uh... like that. The Wasset Keys uh, oh, navigate pretty seamlessly. <laughs> so... <laughs> its suffering was real, but you will see it again. 
Do you, do you happen to see that the stoat also reacted? Oh, did it? Yeah, it said like, hey, what's going before it got cut off and it died. This man is not putting up a fight. No, he's no, he's not because he's teaching you. <laughs> this this is the other interesting thing. The guy you're playing against is a character. Not only does he serve functionally as kind of the mechanics that you're testing yourself against, he has a kind of personality which within the context of the gameplay informs what those mechanics are. I was it, lost it, deep it, in the forest. Okay. It's not like meta for its own sake, it actually enhances the strategic gameplay because you get some sense of what it is you're strategizing against. Right or left, what do we want to do? Oh no, you, you click all of them to reveal all of them and then you oh, choose do them. I? Yeah. So the you can right click on the to sigil. Suck. Well, you can right click on the sigil. So the cat, when you play it, is just kind of like an infinite loop of, like, you could, you could use it unlimited times, like a squirrel that doesn't go away. It'll only go away if it's I killed see. by a card opposite. But it does take up a slot on your on your board. Oh, I see the cat. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a good choice. I, I personally don't like to use the adder very much. I'm less focused on dealing damage to individual cards and more focused on, like, kind of Bandit overall competition sack. strategy. <laughs> yep, so these are items. Uh, these are replenished at new item spots, and there are, like, one or two other mechanics that could do it. Uh, but, yeah, right. use them or lose them. Uh, if you ever get to a knapsack and you've got well, you know what? Actually, one thing about this game that's really, really cool. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, Josh, You are suddenly robotic. I uh, know. I'd clear. Am I? It was just for a second, and probably just on our end. Okay, that's cool. Neat. Anyhow. One thing I really like about this game is that there are lots of states that have complex mechanical interactions, and they actually leave a lot of them kind of up for you to discover. Like, I was really far into my time playing this game before I discovered a lot of kind of, like, niches, and some the internet had to tell me about. This is a game that is dense with secrets, let me put it that way. So yeah, you can play the River Snapper there, and it'll slowly grind away at that stump, but can't get past it. The stump is blocking it since it's a ground. It's not a flying enemy. <laughs> Same with the stone on right. that stump. The wolf will also work away at that boulder. Flies over creatures to attack directly. Oh. How do I deal with that? Uh, you attack it with something that can kill it. But if you're asking, how do you play a card where the cat is? The answer is you pretty much don't. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's just the squirrel, the stoats, wow, seriously. So I have to end my turn and then the attacks go? Okay. Oh, uh, well, yep. Yeah. Now let's we might see. want to use the I have nothing pliers. in my hand. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Ah. Oh. I gave it teeth. <laughs> I didn't think you'd really do it, he says. Okay, so if you play that wolf on the uh, river, tor the snapping tortoise and the cat, uh, you can play it in front of the wolf, and it will kill the wolf for a chance to damage you. Yeah. But we're dead anyway. No, no, because we attack first. The wolf will put three points of damage on the board, tipping the scales yeah. in our favor, and then no, the bat tips right. it two in the other direction. So, currently, we are dealing damage much faster than they can deal it to us. Uh, yeah, you could just you could just go ahead and play this one out. Yep. 
Yep. Just, yeah. So, Redscarn, have you played uh, Buckshot Roulette? I have not, but I'm, I am I have downloaded it. it. It is a very similar, similar game. It's definitely similar in terms of kind of like vibe and tonality and with some of the playfulness of it. Uh, I will say that I actually think this game represents a really, really interesting Strange stones. challenge once you kind of get into it. So there's, without getting too much okay. into sort of spoilers and like the kind of things that you unveil by playing it, because I think it's really worth playing uh, through not much less blind than you would be after watching this week. Uh, there's a roguelike this is a kind of like endless mode that you can unlock which has lots what of challenges that make it more difficult what is going on here he says pick me I'll pick him <laughs> what an honor okay so it's going to turn into a wolf after one turn sort of or a super stoat that Oh, so so dogs can fly now. Indeed. <laughs> so yeah, Let's see what we got here: uh, flying coyote and flying bat. So he's gonna do four points of damage immediately, and there's not a lot you can do with your current deck to stop it. So all you gotta do is, uh, what do you gotta do? Hit harder. Well, we could use the squirrel and then stoat. Uh, you could play the squirrel and then the cat, I would say. Because this cat basically stands in for the squirrel. No. Uh, now's probably a good time to use one of your bottled squirrels anyway, though. Yeah. In fact, maybe just both your bottled squirrels. Why not? Because that'll let you bring the wolf out as well. So you'll be doing damage on parody. Oh shit, the cat's in the room. Oh, never mind. Alright. No, yeah, don't worry about it too much. Because, again, as long as nothing's... The wolf's doing direct damage, you're going to push back harder than it that bat can push in. Elder Stoat. Okay. Uh, I love that series. Get a scroll <laughs> the Elder <here>. Stoats for. <laughs> and this should do it. How do you know how many points away, like, you are from winning? I haven't been keeping track of specifically the amount of... Uh, so at the done. top, at the top of the scale, there's like a little. It swings one way or the other. Uh, it's oh, is there? five points in. Yeah, there's a five point buffer for each of you, and it. So you you have to basically do ten points of damage. Which is, say, I guess, actually, like, not from, like, the beginning of the match, but, like, I guess what I mean is there's ten points between your failure well, and your victory. Nah, this is a fun one. Oh, a small group of survivors. Survivors implying that they survived something. I mean, we're all surviving something. Warm one of my. Will it? I think they're gonna eat it. It's not impossible, but. I, I mean, I, I don't feel the need to explain how this mechanic works exactly, but. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Huh. Ah, oh, they let me leave. All right. Okay. Foul cabin. Do 
Can you get up mid match? I can't remember. Right, so yeah, so go ahead and scroll forward. Um, no, so go ahead and scroll forward a little bit. Okay, so we're up against here. So that so one will be blocked, grizzly with... but the grizzly bear. Yeah, yeah, that grizzly. It's gonna do a shitload of damage, and then there's the sparrow, which is gonna be blocked by the grand fur until it can break it down. Uh, how do we defend against the grizzly? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's difficult. Uh, at this point, anything you put in front of it is just gonna delay it for one turn before it starts doing direct damage again. So you can just feed it an endless supply of squirrels, but that doesn't get yeah. you anywhere. I'm gonna take the option of uh, not dealing with it. Actually, I guess we'll put the stoat out there. All right. Spot, oh, yeah. you sure? Probably should have put the bullfrog, but... That poor stoat. Uh... Yeah, at this point, pretty much the only uh, thing you can do is wait until the sparrow chews down that grand fur so that you can play a card there. But otherwise, anything you play in front of that grizzly is just going to get eaten. Well... That's not wrong. We could do could, this. Yeah, you could do, definitely do some damage, uh, which that's going to get a half killed. So, depending on what else you got in your deck, I, no. I don't actually remember. Oh. Oh, well, yeah, this this is probably... Uh, you're probably going to hit the first wall here. Yep. <laughs> Did I just lose? <laughs> Candlestick. Oh, we're doing some fucking stories untold shit now. <laughs> Pretty much. I, I like this game better conceptually than Stories Untold, to be completely honest. Well, Stories Untold has the the problem of it just kind of being a really bad meta narrative. Right. It doesn't really go anywhere. Like, the this, most this obvious shit. and uncreative version of what they could have done with it. Alright, neat. So this is definitely one of... The, again, without going too much into details, this is definitely one of those games where you play it through it once... Like, you play through the story stuff, and then the endless mode is just kind of like a whole other game that will end up delivering twice as much replay value, potentially. Let's do the Sparrow. I need more one sacrifice stuff that can do stuff. I want to say oh, it took me, like, t maybe, like, eight hours, to eight to ten hours to play this game through the first time, and I had, like, 60 hours in a total, so that's, like, 50 just from the kind of endless mode they added. What is blood? Blood is the, oh, the, that's blood the droplets. That's the sacrifices. value of the sacrifice. So effectively, if you one black goat is equal as a sacrifice to, like, three squirrels. Interesting. So a black goat, it costs one squirrel to summon. Uh, one squirrel, of course, any other creature. And then it's, like, it like if you have a grizzly or something that requires three blood, you can just sacrifice the black goat to play the grizzly. Oh. Hey, first boss battle. Here we go. I, I do love that there's this sort of role-playing <laughs> aspect to what's going on here. And that I'm fighting yeah, evil like, DM. That's, that's a very common way of characterizing him, and it's not wrong. I mean, there's there's layers to that, but again, like, yeah, there's, there's just so much interesting to talk about in this game. Is he one health? Yeah. Alright, let's yeah, do... So, what are you up against here? Oh, wait, that's gonna fly over him. Whoops. Right, and it's gonna kill the sparrow immediately, but 
It's a sparrow. We can do. Well, I could sacrifice the sparrow and immediately summon a bullfrog, but he would kill him. Uh, yeah. Actually, it, it wouldn't, because the how the turn order works is your guy attacks, oh, I see. then okay. their cards move forward, away. then their cards attack. So one thing you could do here is you could, yeah, you know, summon the bullfrog, which will get rid of the coyote. Yeah, per perfect good move. Uh, I guess we need more squirrels at this point. Sure. We could sacrifice the bullfrog and the squirrel and get the wolf out here doing stuff. Does this happen? End of the owner's turn, so that won't be. We can wait. Yes, the bullfrog will hit the pack meal before it moves. Yeah. Let's get another scroll. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, the coyote's gonna kill that once it moves forward. Oh, does it do two damage? Oh, fuck. Yep. Actually, but I wasn't paying attention to how much damage you've done. Kaede doesn't get to oh. move because you got through the first stage. Gold However, and cards. However, that said... Ah! Ah! That's not fair. Can I sacrifice these things? Uh, or are they, nope. like, sure physical can. object uh, obstacles? They, yeah, they are commensurate to the uh, the boulders and the stumps. Oh. Wait, what the? Oh, it will move to the space. Well, that's annoying. A little bit. But on the other hand, uh, it's a good way to ensure you kill it. Yeah, okay. I see where we're going with this. Do you want the Bloodhound, or do you want the Coyote? Well, it doesn't matter where you play the Black Goat, because you'll be presumably sacrificing it. So, once you've sacrificed yeah. it, you can put that card anywhere. Uh, yeah, but if you put it in front of the Bloodhound, it'll kill the Bloodhound. If you put it in front of the Coyote, it'll kill the Coyote. Uh, yeah, Let's take the you. Bloodhound out. Its effect is more annoying. What does the Adder do? Uh, that is an instant kill. As soon as it does a point of damage to a creature, the creature dies. Fantastic. Well, I can block this coyote for the moment, but that doesn't really save it. Uh, you know what? I should have probably put a boulder there. Hold on. summon anything at the moment. We're gonna drop the boulder here. Should we have dropped it in front of the snake? We got two. I don't... Instant kill is for, like, cards, not for me, right? Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't work on the boulder, so... Drop the squirrel there. <laughs> the mule's key... I don't know if you have time to well, that we can uh, to be lock able. off the... drawn a squirrel just to block that coyote. Yeah. Okay, so he's currently doing three damage to you. Uh, you'll be doing no damage since you're going to be hitting the pack mule. Alright, that's one damage to you, and then you hit the mule. 
So you're kind of controlling the rate of bleed here, which in the short term, fortunately, protect you. I've lost any oh, yeah. any more squirrels, and I can't, you know. All right, we just gotta see what happens. All right, so you're about to kill that mule. Uh, I guess here goes. Oh. Hello. Oh, jeez. Hey, there you go. You might just have a chance here. Oh my goodness, yeah. Uh... Oh, probably not, actually. <laughs> Wait, do I lose if... I don't know, check that sigil. Okay. The creature would attack this... Oh, seriously? That's the uh, playing you off music of this game. Hang on. There's still a way out of this. Uh, yes, because the birds can attack over the starvation. More about dealing with that coyote. Uh, yeah. Three damage from them. That's two. This is one. I I can't take any more damage or I lose. I don't think there's a way out of this. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure. I think I see something that I I might wait, try wait, 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 wait. but yeah, okay, okay. Hang on. I feel bad, they're trembling. Okay, we get the cat out there and absorb the coyote's attack. Mm -hmm. the okay, yeah. So we're gonna and the cat will also let you play the this. other cat. Yeah. Well, mm, that's not really what we need. What we need is... Well, mm, we could do that. Yeah, okay. Here we go. I'm gonna sacrifice both cats to bring in... River Snapper would kill the adder. You're gonna to want to use the birds here, uh, because he's gonna keep playing those starvations, so you're gonna to need to keep attacking over them. Okay, but if the adder attacks, it'll kill whatever I have in the squirrel spot. That is that is true, actually. Uh, because of where you laid out the so cats no, there. I I what Kill the adder with that, and then we'll deal with. Yep. With this board configuration, yes, I, I think goes. this is probably just it, but. Honestly, it was a pretty good first wave for your first run of the Prospector. Yeah, that's. I think that's it. Alan, feel free to just hit the bell and uh, move forward here. Uh, the big Dumb. hands. I love that creepy effect. Are we in a wood chipper or something? What the? No. Okay. This is the. This is what's behind that door in the cabin. Ah. You want to ask me a favor before you kill me? A memento. So well, this is pure, the same, pure so. chance, yeah. Pure chance. Power and health. Well, this is way better. Than the other so one. far, you're just making a river snapper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, here you go, though. This, this, this is better than a river snapper. Could either have one that kill that stops airborne creatures, or one that we can sacrifice. Yep. You sacrifice a two blood one. Does it count as two blood? Nope. 
But it'll still be there holding six health. And, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unlike a cat, which is a little more fragile. Uh, it does have a higher cost, but... You know what? I, I'm pleasantly surprised by the <laughs> deviation from Buttsgarn. I applaud your creativity. Look, I want to make sure that the Death Note definitely kills you. You want to make sure that everybody knows whose fault this was. 